Hey everybody, uh, this is a review for Module 1. Looks like you have a pop quiz coming up, so if you're watching this, good for you. I'm not announcing this to my students, so if they see this, then great. And if you're not in my class and you see this, then great. Uh, especially if you go to the same high school I go to that I teach. Uh, anyways, uh, write the domain and range of the function as an inequality using set notation and interval notation. So here's the first one. It's a parabola, you guys. Um, it's a quadratic. Okay, now remember, domain is how much does the graph go left and right? Domain is an x answer. Range is how much it goes up and down. Range is a y answer. Okay, so the domain, this graph, the leftest most point is right there, which is x equals negative 4. But negative 4 is not included, so we're going to have we're going to have an open circle or an equals bar. It's just going to be less than or greater than on this one right here, and it goes all the way to positive 4 where it's included. Okay, well let's go ahead and get started here. So let's go ahead and write the inequality. So x goes from negative 4 to positive and 4. Now 4 is included, negative 4 is not included. So an inequality is written like that. Set notation has those funny brackets. So this says the set of x remember this this is the word such that so the set of x such that and you just write this inequality in here x is between negative 4 and positive 4 negative 4 is not included so there is no equals bar and positive 4 is included okay now interval notation when it's not being included then we have a parentheses and when it is being included we have a bracket so there's interval notation okay so this says this inequality right here, okay, this parenthesis says that there is no equals bar on here, and this bracket says that there is an equals bar. Okay, now range is up and down movement. That's a y answer. So it goes all the way down to negative 4, and it goes all the way up to positive 4. All right, is negative 4 included on the graph? Well, it's not on this side, but it is on this side. So since the graph does go down to negative 4, at least in some of the parts, we have to include that. So there it is as an inequality. Remember, range is a y answer. Set notation, just put it in the set um, uh, parentheses there, those funny uh, parentheses or brackets. And so the set of y such that y is uh, in between negative 4 and positive 4 inclusively on both ends right there. Interval notation, we're going to have brackets on both ends. Okay, so there's interval notation. All right, how about this guy right here? All right, this is an exponential um, uh, graph right here. Okay, so remember, range is how much does this graph go left and right? Well, it looks like it goes to the left forever and to the right forever, so it goes to negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay, now we don't need to write this plus sign there. I think I just did it on, on this one right here. So it goes from negative infinity, x is between negative infinity and positive infinity, and you never have equals on infinities, you guys, because um, you can never equal a negative infinity. So because uh, it just keeps going, you guys. You never reach negative infinity or positive infinity because you can just keep going and keep going. So there is no equals bar on that. So anyways, it goes to the left forever and goes to the right forever. Set notation is just that in set uh, brackets. And then interval notation, they always have parentheses next to the infinities. Okay, so this says it's all the x intervals between um, uh, all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. You can just say all real numbers too. Do you remember that symbol? All right, range is an up and down movement. It goes up forever, but it doesn't go down forever. It goes down to y equals this line is y equals 0 okay and this doesn't cra uh, cross the line y equals 0 so it's just uh, everything greater than so um, uh, 0 is less than y is less than um, uh, infinity okay or you can um, uh, you can just say y is greater than 0 that says the same thing I don't know why I didn't say that so y is greater than 0 set notation is that right there and then uh, interval notation is that okay all right and you can also say um, uh, well that's interval notation this interval notation is the same as y is greater than 0 we could have wrote, written y is greater than 0 in here and in here but those are okay too Okay, so what else do we have? All right, so now we're going to make a graph. Okay, so draw a graph to match uh, the real world situation. So, so here we have a bike uh, rider st uh, starts at a very fast pace and rides for 40 miles in two hours. He gets tired, slows down, travels only 20 miles in the next three hours. 
he takes a rest for an hour and then rides uh, back to where he started at a steady pace without stopping for four hours. Okay, so so I'm going to have this be the miles. Uh, it looks like the miles away from, I don't know, home or the beginning point or the starting point. Down here be the time and hours right here. And then we've got to have a title. So let's go ahead and uh, first label the axes. So miles from the initial point right here. Okay, so here's zero miles from the initial point. So pretend like you're you're starting at home. You start riding, you start riding. Okay, and then you, you loop back home. So how many miles are you away from home in terms of how many hours you're riding? Okay, let's go through this here. So right here it says he rides 40 miles in two hours. Okay, so here's two hours right here and he's going to go 40 miles. So right to there. So here's zero miles miles and zero times all the way up to 40 miles in two hours so let's go ahead and do that part right there okay then the next part says he gets tired he slows down and travels only 20 miles in the next three hours so the next three hours one two three he's only going to go 20 more miles so 20 more miles is going to be at 60 so it's going to go up to there right there okay all right, and then the next part says he takes a, a rest for an hour. So he's going to stay at 60 miles away. He takes a rest, okay? So for the next hour, he's going to stay right there, okay? And then, uh, then he rides back to where he started at a steady pace without stopping for four hours. So for four hours, one, two, three, four, he's going to go back to where he started from. So back to zero miles from where he started from. So there's our graph right there, okay? something like that okay all right so what are two ways that the graph uh, the graph function below could be used to solve real world problems I think I did three of them right here so the first one is is this function could be used to show uh, when the profit is rising or following of a certain company because here we got uh, profit right here and we got millions right here so some company you know profit of rising or falling so in 1998 to it looks like 96 it rose and then it kept rising for a little bit so if this if this is 2004 this is 2000 so I don't know about 1997 something happened and and it, it, it went down a little bit so and then looks like about uh, this is 2000 about 2002 ish it started going back up again okay so here we are in 2008 so so here's one way you can talk about this the function could be used to show when the profit is rising or falling on that you could also say uh, could be used to find when the uh, the profit of a certain year so what was the profit in terms of millions of dollars in a certain year in 96 it looks like it was about I don't know 3.3 million dollars right here okay so it peaked out right here here's a relative max in about 1997 right there and then looks like in 2002 had a bad year right there but then in 2008 it's climbing I don't know what happened after that or we can say uh, the function could be used to find the the intervals of when they had gains or when they had losses so here this interval there is a gain in this interval there is a loss and here in this interval there is a gain again okay so just describing that graph all right so find the inverse of the linear functions okay so when we found the inverses we first uh, substituted in y for the f of x or g of x or h of x or whatever and then we switch the x's and the y's okay and then uh, so I just switch my x's and my y's and then we solve for this y so I'm going to go minus 4, minus 4 right there, and then we're going to divide by the negative 2 now. So let's get rid of this negative 2, divide both sides by negative 2, and we get uh, y equals that. And then we say you know, we're going to rewrite it as f inverse. f inverse is that f to the negative 1 power. So you can say this right here. Typically, you guys, at least on my old school, we don't leave a negative in the denominator. That's kind of tacky. So to absorb it in the numerator, it's going to make this negative 4 positive and make this positive x negative. So it's actually 4 minus x. So to absorb that negative upstairs, you just flip them around the minus sign right there. Okay, I, I suppose I'd take that also, but I like that answer. That answer looks a little bit cleaner. Anyways, let's try one more of those here. So here's h of x. So we're going to let y equals that, and then we're going to switch the x's and the y's, and now we're going to solve for this new y. So first I'm going to go minus 1, minus 1, okay? And then we're gonna, I'm going to get rid of this denominator, okay? So let's multiply both sides by 4. So when we multiply both sides by 4, remember you got to wrap the whole parentheses times this because it's the whole side 
divide times 4. So distribute the 4 through. 4x minus 4 gets me this over here equals the 3y. Then we divide both sides by 3, and we get that. And then don't forget, we're going to write it as, uh, this one is h inverse, so h to the negative 1 power. That says um, h inverse of x is equal to this, this piece right here, 4x minus 4 over 3. Okay, all right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and, and good luck up on your pop quiz. Take care.